edition of yesterday's broadcast live show where we took this um this was just a bezel made and it was left rough with the metal all around it and i polished it however i left i polished a portion of it just so for some pictures yesterday the other side is still yet to be polished and the other side of the bezel is yet to be polished so um but what really caught a lot of people's attention yesterday hold on let me is how i polished the back of this um plate hold on let me do that and without creating a groove near the solder joint you know that that solder joint right here in the front so even the most experienced jewelers were like freaking out and saying how did you do that how did you do that how did you do that and i keep telling them um uh, i did say there's a youtube video up so it's something that you can't explain with you know on a comment so i really <laughs> encourage people to watch the video because i showed you my technique as a jeweler a lot of people would never i repeat never show you these techniques but remember i am i i don't that's not my business anymore i'm not a bench jeweler i love to play and make jewelry but my main business is manufacture and sell the jewel tool machine that i created yes would you say yeah, I'm here to educate. Thank you, Vaughn. That's my son. He's here again today. So I am here to educate you because I want you to be able to do this on the Jewel Tool. I'm telling you guys, the reason why I got this question so much, it was from everyone who doesn't have a Jewel Tool, hands down. Because what they have going for them are a gazillion little bits that they have to work on with their flex shaft you know granted they all have a purpose you guys hear me say this over and over again but they're being used for purposes that they were not designed to use the reason why people use that is because guess what there is no other way it's either that or your big polisher and the rest is up to you to try to macgyver but i i'm the chosen one oh and i have done this for you so please wake up. I, I, I've done this for many, many years. We're going on almost 20 years that I've created this jewel tool. This is like our, what, how, our 10th version of it. We've got fifth version. No, no, we are. We've had more than five versions. So just so you know, this little bad boy is in many, many, many high-end manufacturing facilities around the world and primarily in Mumbai, in Thailand, in Bangkok, and in Kowloon, China. You know who I'm talking about. So, y and Italy too. I love you guys, the Italians. So it's like one of those secrets that they don't want to tell you about. So I'm, watchmakers in oh yes, in many watchmakers in Switzerland and in Germany. Yes, forgot about that. Forgot about that watch people. Oh yeah, oh, it's a dream. It's a dream machine for them. So you guys, Today, we are going to attempt to. Who? Hello? I, I would like to stop for a moment and take this time to wish Linda a very happy birthday. Linda, happy birthday from me to you and our team here at Jewel Tool. Yay, it's Linda's birthday. Linda, you need to wear a crown. Woo! You deserve it, Linda. You are an amazing, talented, and might I say, gorgeous woman. So hats off to you for everything you've done. You've been a great supporter of us, and we love you here. I just want you to know. So I wish you the happiest birthday yet. I hope you have many, many happy and healthy more. So yay, happy birthday to Linda. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Linda. A kiss from me to you. I just made that up. I know, right? So it came from my heart. Um, so you guys. Uh, 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 uh,
Mary Bartels is going into surgery in a minute, but she's tuned in. Mary, I'm going to say a prayer for you, Mary. I got goosebumps. Mary, Mary, I hope everything goes smoothly and perfectly as you want it to in that surgery. And I, I would like you guys you to send me a message when you're all well. Uh, but I'm going to say a little prayer for you and think of you during this entire segment. Um, I love you, Mary, and my heart is with you. I'm going to say a prayer. All will be well. Oh, I got goosebumps, Yarl. You know, you guys, I do this for you guys. I really enjoy coming and seeing you guys and saying hi to you. You guys are so amazing. So I just want you to know that. I, I, I have a lot of work to do today, you guys. <laughs> I've been nonstop on the phone taking care, taking care of business. But I'm here for you, and we pretty much left Literally, I left everything where we left off yesterday. So if you missed yesterday's show, just a little recap before I get started. We polished and I showed how to grind the outside remainder of this bezel. I had Lori L Union make the J for us. You see J for Jewel Tool. And so we are going, so I went ahead and cleaned it. I did the inside right there where you see the shank meets the bezel and we polished out that solder joint uh, i showed how to grind the outside rim of the bezel i showed how to do the surface nice and dead dead did i say dead flat i mean dead flat you guys that is like flat so and i showed how to do the inside as well you guys and how to clean the solder joint so if you missed yesterday's show it's a really good show to watch so Today, what we plan on doing is putting the crushed turquoise in here and creating an inlay. Okay, you guys, I can show you guys how to polish this perfectly all day long. Have I ever crushed turquoise and put an inlay with glue? The answer is no. But you know what? This is, you know, either have some of you. How about that? So I'm going to go through all the trials and tribulations and figure out What's the best way? So many of you guys have given me amazing advice on what glue to use. So yesterday, we didn't know what glue to use. We didn't know if sh we should use epoxy or we should use um, uh, like super crazy glue. It wasn't crazy glue, but it was like Loctite glue. Yes. So um, I did half and half. Just let me real quick. So on this one piece, we did half and half. We just did. This is a sampler. Don't look at how beautiful I created this gorgeousness. So this side that we blacked yesterday is the, um, is the, yeah, it slid diagonally down uh, the middle. And so this side right here is the crazy glue, let's say. And this side right here is the epoxy. Where am I? Wha oh, okay, there we go. This side is the epoxy. This side is the crazy glue. So, and we marked it to remember which one's which. So I'm going to do a taste test. You know how I always say do a little skin test? It's <laughs> I'm not uh, literally, please don't think me literally. But you know how I always say do a little skin test, see how that works, and then proceed. So we're going to do that and see which glue works best before we go in for the kill on this little bad boy. Um, so that's that. And so he, fingers crossed, let's see. I don't know. You guys, I'm not really hoping much for this, so don't get your hopes up, but we'll see what happens. So. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to uh, my fellow amazing, did I say amazing? Like ridiculously amazing jewel toolers out there. First and foremost, let's go ahead and bring out Barbara. Barbara has done this before. So she made these uh, rings and she inlaid them in turquoise. You guys see that? Gorgeousness. So let me zoom this one in so you guys can see the rings she made. Wow, and she used the jewel tool to grind and polish that. Hello. So that is, that's, um, wait, what happened there? Wrong one. So that is Barbara, who has joined our jewel tool community. So if you guys are not a part of it, you guys just search under groups, and it's called jewel tool community. Okay, next we have, we have, uh, who do we have? We have Lisa Jacober. 
So Lisa Jacober, see Lisa Jacober, she, Jacober, I don't know, I love you Lisa. So she made, she shows the progress, one, two, three, all the way to this. So watch, I, I did a screen, I did a close up shot of this sucker. Hold on. So she used tourmaline. Okay, so she's a little step ahead of us. Us pathetic folks were using turquoise. But she decided to use tourmaline to do an inlay. And I believe this was um, a gift. I can't remember. But that came out really cool. So you see how she created the channels. And she's got the 3M vet wrap as her fingertips. Yay, Lisa Jacober. Now, next we have, um, we have Nicole Ritchie, who created this. So she showed us doing it in resin. So this has like the resin bubble. And I thought this would be awesome to do a live show because I can show you guys how to polish the resin. And if it doesn't come out as smooth as you want, I can make this look like a darn cab for crying out loud. So that one I got covered. That one, that one I could do no problem. You know, that's an easy one. I got that covered. I know exactly how to polish resin with the jewel tool. So that's good. Then we have, then we have <laughs> another one of Nicole Ritchie's pieces. So this one she used Gorilla uh, Gel, she said. Okay, so Nicole ma makes me, my little inlay look like I'm a freaking kindergartner. <laughs> you know, you guys, I just want you to know, I am, I have no ego whatsoever. I speak the truth. You like it, you don't. It is what it is. But damn, Nicole, you and all of you, Barbara, Lisa, you guys, you guys are pretty hot there. I got to admit, this is just nutso. <sighs> Anyways, whatever glue you guys decide to use. Oh, Lisa Jacober said she used, she sent me a message. She used for this one, for the tourmaline, you guys, just so you know, get out of here. Um, for the tourmaline, Lisa Jacober used E6000, and she told me, Ani, it polished beautifully. Lisa, I kind of wish you told me that before yesterday's show, because then we don't have E6000. So just so you know, Lisa has said the glue E6000 um, polishes and grinds beautifully on the jewel tool. Little hint right there, you guys. And um, uh, Nicole Ritchie used Gorilla Gel. Just so you know. I don't know. Do you mean Gorilla Gel or do you mean Gorilla Epoxy? Uh, gorilla, the, gel kind. the Gorilla Glue, the gel kind. Okay, because I have the Gorilla Epoxy and we didn't use it. We like chicken out. I don't know. So, you guys, <sighs> let's grind this mother down and see what we get. I don't know. You know, in yesterday, I didn't even grind the turquoise really well. It was, just a, it was lovely. But everyone seemed to f like uh, love it. <laughs> so I'm here to educate and entertain. So uh, join in the fun, you guys. That's all I have to say. So who is here today? Let me say a quick shout out to everybody. Uh, everybody? OK, so. OK, so we have many new YouTubers out there. Um, here, just to slow the sh like to not slow the show down, let me give a big hello to everyone, and I wish you all an uh, amazing day. So, mwah, love you all for coming. So let's just get started. I usually say hello to everyone, but you know how much I love you all. Mwah, 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 mwah. I love you all, and then you guys talk to me. I talk to all of you, and you new YouTubers out there, just know you write a comment. Guess who's going to respond to that comment? Mm -hmm. You know, little me there. So you guys are hilarious, by the way, on your I have to share a comment real quick. Someone posted on YouTube, you guys. This is hilarious. She said this, and I didn't understand what this meant. Hold on, look. So someone said this. This is hilarious. So they said, uh, the, for yesterday's show, I loved your, it says life, but they meant live. Very nice interaction and good learning. Have to get the jewel tool. And then this one sang that song, Psycho Killer, Psycho Killer. But instead of writing that, she wrote Psycho Jeweler, Psycho Jeweler. And this guy just simply said nice things about me. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you, Louise. Love ya. And then, so the Psycho Jeweler, Psycho Jeweler, I don't know. 
Yeah, so the, she said that that sold her. Ah, there you go. Psy so she put the little lyrics to Psycho Killer. So, but she changed it to Psycho Jeweler, Psycho Jeweler. Ba, 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 better run, 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 run. Haha. Ha. I've been watching this amazing tool for weeks now, but today sold me, baby. So sold me, baby. Right there. I can't even say it. So old. So old me, baby. Anyway, so. Okay, so let's go ahead and grind this sucker. So I am going to use like the finer diamond to grind you guys. Um, <laughs> let's find it. Okay, there we go. We have it. It's on standby right here. And we're going to grind this sucker. So let's go ahead and. Oh. Oh, so Diana, look at the, let me get a, Diana, I know Diana Schnitzka. You know, everyone who knows Diana knows this. <coughs> so Diana, um, the epoxy that I used on one of the sides of this ring was the JB Weld. So uh, I'll tell you right now how good it worked. So you guys, I'm just going to use the finer diamond here and we're going to grind. So this is the finer of the flex diamond here. It's okay. I'll show it right here because it's cleaner. So you know how the diamonds have three different grades. So extremely coarse, the grinding diamond. This is the medium and this is the fine. So I'm going to be using the finer one, you guys. So let's get started. I ha okay, I'm not going to run this too fast. Maybe I should. I don't know. I'm going to run it fast. Screw it. Let we go big or go home. So this side, you guys, this side. So there's like a, there's like a, what do you call? Here, let me do this. I, for those of you who don't know that there's like a there's like a little divider under here. And so this side was a super glue, super glue, and this was the epoxy. It's like little compartment. So you guys see that? So we marked the super glue with um, a Sharpie yesterday so I would know. So let's see how it turned out. So let's do the super glue first. It's a little gooey. I'm not going to lie here. It's a little on the gooey side. So it's grinding it. You guys see that? So it's not bad. I, I kind of don't mind the super glue, you guys. So that kind of cut nicely. We'll find out when we polish it. So I'll keep going. So let's do the epoxy. That's the epoxy is on this side. And I'm using some water. I'm grinding the metal first because clearly that's a little. Oh, and the metal just flew off. Thanks, epoxy. Oh, yeah, there goes another one. So the metal is not sticking very well on the epoxy, FYI. But it could have been my fault. I could have just put it up a little too high. I could have put it up a little. He wanted a close-up before I ground. But Robin, I took a picture of it. Here, let's just go back. I took a picture of it yesterday after I was done. Let me show. What? What? Oh. Okay, hold on. Let me show you the picture. So this was it. So this was the picture. Do you guys see that? So this was before I started, right there. Okay, so sorry. <laughs> so here we go. So let's keep going. I don't know where I was. So let's just keep grinding. Let's keep grinding. So I feel like the crazy glue side is working better. I feel like the, the epoxy is a little bit, I don't know what I feel. Oh, there goes one. Oh, well, don't push hard. So someone just, Georgianne said, hi, Georgianne. Georgianne said, Georgianne, I don't push it. I just like touch it like a little light touch. Yeah, you like, you let the disc carry the water. Like, ju yeah, don't push. You see how I'm like lightly touching it? Like it's a little, or you can do this, you know? Yeah, you can put the water on the stone. I'm not putting the water on the stone because I want to see you guys. 
I want you guys to see me grind. So that's pretty good. This side is still higher. So let's go ahead and grind that down. So I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use a finer diamond to grind now. So let's, let's get off of this. And I think I'm okay. God, I still can't find my turquoise uh, small, the three inch, but it's okay. I'm going to use the four inch. Let me clean this off. I'm going to use the four inch only because I don't know where my three inch is. I still haven't replaced it. So this is the sanding diamond. So I'm going to run this about a medium speed only because it's um, a four inch. If I had the three inch, like if I'm doing the three inch, I would run this at high speed. But this one I have at medium speed. So let's go ahead and grind down and see what happens. So I want a nice even hit. So just go like that, see what happens. So the side, let's keep going. Yes, that, yeah, it's true. There went another one, yeah. So it's true. Heidi actually said something very smart. God, Heidi, you're so, like, clever. Heidi said that those metal pieces that I added could have been added when the glue started to dry. It was, yeah, the, the glue was already... The glue was already too dry when I started to add some of those metal pieces. I thought I could fill it in really quick, but clearly I was a little mistaken. So there, that should do that. Let's just kind of bring it in all the way to the edge. And so you can grind it dead flat, but I kind of want to. So I've exposed the bezel here. Let me go ahead and expose the bezel here. So you see how it'll grind the stone and the metal at the same time? Yeah, so some of the ones that stuck are better. They actually are hanging in there. So I think you're absolutely right, Heidi, that I did stick those other ones <laughs> towards the drying cycle of the glue. You know, yesterday, you know, you guys, I don't, my life is not making these videos. I was a little pressured on time yesterday only because I had a lot of work to do. I had people I had to respond to, some colleagues of mine that needed stuff. So I was a little bit in a rush. And my dad always used to say, never do anything when you're in a rush. So that was that. Hey, this looks pretty, no, this doesn't look that bad. I'm kind of digging this. So let me give it one nice little pass and change up my little scratch pattern. There we go. Okay, so that's not bad. What do you guys think of this? Huh? So I went, I kind of gave it a little bit of a dome. <laughs> I kind of made it look like it's a real stone. But I could have gone dead flat, but I kind of like the little bubble. What do you guys think? Do you guys like the bubble? Let me kind of, like, let me at least make it even, the bubble. Or do you want me to go dead flat? What do you guys care? Do you guys care if I created a little bit of a dome, or should I go dead flat? What do you think, Yaro? No. However, I do kind of want to get to that one silver chunk down here and polish it. So I am grinding it, you guys. I do want to kind of get to that silver piece. So there. I, I'm... Oh, so I have... Okay. Okay, so I have a mixture of emotions. Okay, so guess what? I am going to... Okay, so you guys, I'm going to do the best of both worlds. I ground it a little, and I still have some dome left. So I'm going to leave it a semi-dome. So it's not completely a little dome. So 
Of course, I have to make the birthday girl happy because the birthday girl suggested that. And so did M Myra and uh, Bonnie said a little dome too. So I, I, I love you all. So I'm going to make everyone happy. That's my phone. So, hey, you guys, this is not bad. I did not expect this. So in my opinion, so far, they... It, okay, so look, uh, so Deanna, you can you actually can see the divider right here peeking out right here. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. Sorry, you can see the divider peeking out. But yesterday I noticed the divider is not flush with the rest of the bezel. It kind of had like a little dip in the center. So I'm never gonna see that divider again. So we best leave it like this. Yeah, I know, Heidi, but the, the diagonal line in the center is not deep enough. So this is what we got right now, you guys. Not bad, huh? So I agree. Heidi was right. These ones that I put on, they were afterthoughts. And it was basically when the, um, then the glue had already started to start its drying process. So those flicked off really quick. But it's okay. We didn't need them because I had more inside. Woo! Okay. So you guys... So far, just from my um, grinding, so far they both ground beautifully. So this side, this this side right here, let me go ahead and create a little bit of a line right here. So this side right here where that line is right there. So this side was done with the crazy glue. See how we marked that? And this side was the epoxy. So I would say both ground down beautifully. So they both so far have an A+. Plus. Now the the we'll see how they go to a polish that's the real trick that's the real test so right now i'm gonna go to um i don't know if i need to go to the medium you guys i mean i can let's just hit it real quick okay so since i have the three inch i'm running it at high speed thank you claire claire said absolutely fabulous so far thank you so we're just going to give it a quick little zippity doo dah, you guys. Just a quick little. Oh, my God. I love that. Myra said, Myra. So Myra said yesterday she polished a few uh, Baroque pearls yesterday. Huge pearls. And she says one of them flew into the vacuum. She says that sucker is pa is very powerful. That's the vacuum right here. That's the one that we connect to the jewel tool. And she says they came out fabulous. I'm so proud of you, Myra. Are you listening? Myra, Myra, Myra. I'm so proud of you. So if you guys missed a show, we actually polished this pearl and we took all the, um, I would say, the uneven waves out of it with my jewel tool. So you guys, if you guys missed that pearl video, it was just done earlier this week, right, Yara? We did the pearl this week, yeah. Ooh, they, we've been doing such crazy stuff. So you guys, it's looking shinier, of course, because I went to the medium. Now, if you get some metal on it, you guys, just remember to just try to get it off a little, use a little toothbrush. But for the most part, whatever doesn't come off is not really going to harm anymore. It just kind of got in there but you can just kind of rub a dub dub a toothbrush is a great way to do that just a quick little side note remember i'm not here to create projects i'm here to test teach and give you my techniques and trial and error is kind of fun so we're having fun along the way so you guys i'm gonna use the what did your what did she say thank you myra Okay, so the next is the fine. So we've actually hit this with metal many times, you can see, and it'll still work just fine. We've used it on stone. We actually used it most recently on that um, uh, uh, Cindy's crystal. So you can see already, look at how it polishes the metal. I just want you to know our diamonds polish the metal beautifully. It's just I don't push polishing the uh, metals with the diamond because it's an expensive way to polish metal. However, I can't stop this one manufacturer who works on platinum to stop using the diamond. He just ultimately loves his diamond and it won't change for no matter what I tell him. He just loves the finish he gets um, working on the diamond on his platinum. He's a manufacturer so 
you know, he can afford to spend that extra to get really high end, you know, finishes. So uh, I'm not, I'm not here to fight with anybody. So you guys, so far that looks good. I, I'm, I don't know. So far both have kind of been doing good. Just kind of making sure I go over every little area. And I'm not pushing hard, you guys. This is a time where you don't want to push hard. But your benefit with the jewel tool is, remember, the jewel tool keeps everything nice and cool. So I don't have that issue of am I heating up the stone or the glue. So remember that we have that in our favor. Yay. Jewel tool people are the coolest people on earth because we know how to do things easily. And so you guys see how this is going to stay like this no matter what I do, but it's still got plenty of diamond, my friend. So this will stay, stay. So the next one is my very fine, which, where happened to it? I don't know. Give me a second, you guys. I got to find it. I'm telling you, you guys, I did not clean up from my last show. Last time, whatever we did last with the, uh, the diamond is what I left it as. I don't know what happened to it. it I w oh, this one. Here you go. So remember this one. So this is not metal. Oh, actually, to be honest with you, this isn't metal. And either was this one. I forgot. This is not metal. This was um, on it. This is the silver Sharpie, you guys. Do you remember when we did that heart-shaped uh, stone? Uh, we put a lot of uh, silver sharpie. So this is that same diamond that we've been using since the shows began, you guys. So this has been going on for what is three months now. Mm. And for anyone who says they don't last, uh, don't push hard. So here we go. No, Linda, when I say diamond disc, I mean diamond girl. I mean this. Hold on, let me show you. So when I say diamond, I mean, here, let's show where it says diamond. Like it's got to say diamond like this on it. Do you guys see how it says diamond? All of our diamond wheels will be marked diamond. You guys see that? Diamond. So when I'm saying diamond, I mean all of our diamond. Now, Trizac is going to be marked like this. And this is the one with the, uh, the pyramids. So this only works on metal and glass and plastic, I guess. Yeah, on the yeah, so Linda, if you need more clear information, I can type that for you and send it. But I'm just going to grind it. So we're just going finer and finer, you guys. So just let's get a nice little even little Oh my god. So do you guys see what I mean how the diamonds do polish the metal? So you get both best of both worlds with the jewel tool. So you guys see how that's all polished. Woo! -hoo! You guys, this is looking good. Oh, I love Hi negotiator. Negotiator says jewel tool is cool. Thanks negotiator. So you guys, so this is what we have now. So this is the very fine. You see that? Hello everyone watching on Facebook. So and YouTube. So you guys, I want to try something. So this was my very fine. See how it still works? Ooh, you are my best friend forever. And they almost get better as you, as they age. <laughs> you know, it's like a fine wine. Um, so I don't want to change it. I have a backup here, you guys, in the event that this goes off on camera. I have a backup, but so far you're still standing on standby. I love this one. You can have backups if you're, you know, production or, you know, you just want to back up. Oh, by the way, yes, we did start our Father's Day sale, FYI. So, you guys, I want to kind of give you guys a little insider tip. So, when I polish, like, resin, for example, I use these. Like, you guys see that I have the micro-finishing films? This is on the hard bump on, and this is on the medium soft cushion. So what I want to show you guys, I'm going to use it with the heart. And this is like crap. Look, it's got a uh, nick in it. I don't know what in the world this came from, but whatever. So all I want to say is the micro finishing film here. Go, I'll go ahead and clean whatever's on here just so you guys can see. Sands, 
um, resin and polymer clay and plastics beautifully. And that kind of preps you before the polish. So I don't need this for the turquoise, but I want this for the glue. Are you guys with me? So I'm going to run this at slow speed. And I'm just going to kind of sand it ever so lightly. And this is just for the epoxy and the glue. And I just want to show you guys the difference. So this is kind of, do you guys see how it's already polished right there? I don't know, can you see it? Now I'm going to do the other side. So you don't push hard on this. Just kind of let it do its thing. The what, Yarrow? Yeah, and so these are really affordable, you guys. Like this is one of our most affordable lines of sandpaper. And so this, basically what I'm doing, you guys, is I'm giving the, the glue a fine polish with this. So I'm prepping myself for the next step. Are you guys with me? So I might not be the best stone inlayer, but I'll show you how to finish it darn good. Let me tell you guys, but see the fluidity. Oh my God. Oh my good. You, uh, are we seeing this? So like if, y if you're, tr yeah, so what I uh, notice Instructors don't teach finishing because some of them don't know how to finish or they don't have time because they're, you know, the, they have a hard time. They use other machines, not the ones I have a jewel tool. I'm not referring to those. There's plenty of others that don't. But do you guys see the fluidity? Oh my gosh. This is what I'm talking about. You need this. So we've got that little dome going. You can see how the light reflects that there's a dome, it's not a flat. However, the dome, you guys, this is why people do cabs a lot, because anything that's domed will create, like reflects the light prettier. So, you know, you see a lot of people on YouTube doing this and they just hand file it, because that's all they have. And it's hard to do a dome too. Um, so other than that, you guys, everything looks mighty delicious and I'm gonna leave it the way it is. Maybe I'll switch it up and turn it this way. Thank you guys for the love. I really appreciate it. Yes. So I know this is right. I li I'm digging this too. Thank you, Heidi. Heidi says, wow. Thanks, Heidi. So there you go. Let's just go ahead and keep going. Who says that? <laughs> Carolyn says, hashtag, I love my jewel toy. I love it. And so there you go. So you guys, I'll give you a heads up. Even though I have a little nick in here, it still worked. I wasn't working on anything sharp, you know. Um, if you did have something sharp, that would probably nick more. But when you run these slow, know that they give you, they, they provide what they're designed to do. Are they designed to last forever? The answer is a big fat no. But the reason why 3M keeps this around is because factories love the finish. There's just like nothing comparable to micro finishing film, you guys. I love you. <coughs> Thank you for making me look good. So, yes, yeah, so if you guys want to know how to get these, these are available in the polymer clay and resin add on kit for, f you know, for flat pieces because I used the, um, what's it called? The one with the black cushion. Yes. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, I can, you guys, use my. Uh, felt wheel, you guys, with the one that I don't use on metal to polish everything. and But it, I'm going to get this marred with some metal. I know I am. Um, but I barely need to use this because, honestly, it's so prepped for a final. I'm just going to lightly polish this. And I'll show you guys, if you do get some metal on it, I'll show you guys how to clean it up. Okay, ready, set, go. So I'm not going to run this at full speed. I'm kind of running this a little bit, I would say low, medium-ish. So I already have some compound because I don't want too much. But the second I touch, I'm going to get that polish. Do you guys see that? I just want you to know to not go crazy and bear into the polish. So it's going to polish both the, um, the turquoise 
and the, and the metal at the same time. Do you guys see? I just did that upper part right there. So I'm just going to slowly polish the rest. Kind of get rid of any kind of line marks. But I don't want to push too hard. I don't look at that, you guys. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas to me. What a gift. So now we're going to just keep going. You can add more compound. I think I'm going to do that, actually. Let me go ahead and add some clean compound. Try to use a clean side of your. So we've got some metal on there. It's OK. It's OK. It's all for the cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine, Yarrow. So you guys, I'm just giving it a little polish. So which side is this? This is the more epoxy side. Mm, yeah, it's a little bit, little bit softer, the epoxy. But honestly, so far, so good. I don't have complaints on either side, you guys. I really don't. So, so far, so good. God bless you, Kristen. And so I'm going to do another little technique. So just a light little over polish over everything. I and mean, I'm not pushing hard. The secret, don't push hard. And if it's getting a little bit mucked up, you guys, during this process, look. Remember, I'm here to educate. Do you see how it's getting a little br uh, black? And let's say you don't want it if it's starting to transfer, but it hasn't. But if it does, so even in the middle of what you're working on, you guys, you can tr crank this up at high speed. Take, like some sandpaper on a block of wood or some sandpaper real quick here I have some right here and just hold it here put your vacuum on and just let me do here wherever it's clean and just kind of hold it and kind of get rid of some of that black you don't have to do a lot right now your objective is just to get rid of some of that and you guys see how clean it's cutting before it was creating more black so there you go give yourself a good amount to start oh yeah it's good Yes, so we'll go ahead and give it a quick little touch up right there. I actually bumped up the speed right now to glide over it. And it's actually really pretty when I glide over it up the speed. Yeah, so whatever's on the screen is kind of what I'm using. Actually, this another felt wheel comes in that kit, to be honest with you. That's not bad, Yarrow, actually. And isn't that on sale for Father's Day? Yeah, uh-huh. So let's go. Yeah, that's clean. Oh, here. Here's a tip, you guys, I have for you. So the inside of your felt, whoever has this knows that it's really, really clean and fluffy in here. So as you're doing it, go inside a little. So let's say you want to kind of clean it off a little. Just go inside. I know you guys can't see, but I could feel it. Just go inside and kind of give it a little bit of a... Maybe a side view, Yarrow. So, like, let's... Hold on. Yarrow's going to... But look at that, you guys. Woo! Look at that polish. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. So, look. So, as I'm here... Can you guys see that? So, as I'm here, you can slide to the center and kind of just give it a... More towards the spindle and give it a little bit of a light little polish it kind of like works as like a little buff if you will the area that doesn't have slots that's why you guys couldn't see it and just let me do that again so you guys can see i'll do it on this side okay it's okay we're good let me go ahead and clean any kind of compound that i have off so you guys can see that if there's any that lodge just get rid of it i think we're pretty good Oh, so, oh, Chrissy, ha okay, so I'll give you a quick little um, overview on what's that. Why is this not poly? Oh, there it is. Yeah, we got compound there. That's all I wanted to see. So you guys see that? Woo-hoo. Oh, my gracious goodness. It's pretty, you guys. So let's take a little looksy poo here. Oh, and you can touch it up lightly, you guys, by the way. Holy moly. So, so you can touch it up with like a fluffy buff, you guys, just lightly. 
Look, no compound, just a. Myra says, Myra, yeah, that's not, I, I agree to have to have felt this. You're, you're not going to have to tell me twice. I agree. You should have, th these felt wheels, first of all, they last forever. So to have two on hand, so I actually found one, I forgot in a stash, one says stone, and I have one for like the metal. You guys see that? But this one I'll sand down and it'll go back to being a stone. I showed you guys how to do that. So if you guys want to just kind of give yourself a little extra polish, just look at this. Yeah, you like my tip? Yeah, those are, th so like you guys see how this kind of made it a little bit brighter? It kind of cleans up any kind of compound that you had going in. Okay, so we're gonna evaluate. Hold on, let's take a look-see poo. Okay, so. I don't know what side is polishing better. There. Wow, that came out so pretty. Woo, I can't stop looking. I got to stop. Okay, so you guys, it's really pretty. I'm I, I don't even see. Now you don't have to clean it pretty much because this soft uh, buff that I have, this one right here, this one actually says compound because I can use compound. And we have another one that says um, no compound. So I have two. These come in the, uh, these come in this kit, by the way. Th these come in the micro finishing kit, uh, written just like this compound or no compound. You guys see that? You see how good we are? We even write on buff. Who does this, people? Who does this? Nobody. Okay, so let's look at what we just did, you guys. L let me let it focus. So I have this beautiful polished surface and I just want to show you guys how it's following the light with the outside bezel you see that Ooh. negotiator you don't have um, a jewel tool oh I'm a negotiator if you watch like everyone's shows you need one Jeez. oh my god negotiator after watching like the shows you watch, you would be like a jewel tool fanatic. You'd be making and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. It's fun. So, all right, so let's evaluate what side was good. So this side, so this line right here, just pretend there's an imaginary line. They did. I was just gonna say, Bonnie Mahaffey said, both sides polished beautifully. They really did. So I just wanna say that this, so this side was the super glue and this side was the epoxy. Now, the they both polished good. And you know what's funny is this side has more tiny, tiny crushed turquoise. You guys see that? And it polished pretty. You guys see that? So this side has more chunkier chunks of, um, of turquoise. So that means that there wasn't much uh what's it called much uh like filler space so a lot of this emptiness is the epoxy that you guys see <laughs> oh so the, the uh, right there okay so the divider is here you guys so this side is super glue and this side is epoxy so let's you guys be the judge so that side is the epoxy oh wait hold on okay Okay, Yara says hold it there and I'll zoom in. I'm shadowing it. That's a good side, yeah. So I don't do it too close because then it gets foggy. There you go. So this, uh, so this is the divider, you guys. You can kind of see the divider peeking out from both sides. So there's an invisible line here. So this is super glue. This is um, uh, epoxy. So this is epoxy side. So the epoxy side has way more chunky pieces you guys see that and then this is the super glue side where it has a lot of tiny tiny little particles super glue yarrow says the super glue looks a little bit more crystallized and and the and it's polished which is interesting because everyone told me that to not do super glue they said it's impossible to polish super glue well not on the jewel tool ha 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 Yeah, the super glue did, pop, like, it, even though it's a little crystallized, it did, it did pop more. 
I would say. Interesting. What are pop marks, Bonnie? Oh, what, what, P-O-C-K? Maybe it's a Siri. Oh. Oh, like little, like little scars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could tell. You could tell because what I think that was is the super glue didn't, it crystallized. It crystallized or just doesn't feel perfectly um, solid. Do you know what I mean? There was like kind of air pockets, I would say. So that's why maybe a lot of people warned me against polishing um, super glue because they said you can't do it. Well, hell, I don't know about you, but it's polished. In, in any w case, both sides did look good. So I feel like, I feel like the epoxy kind of was a little cleaner, I would say. But I don't know, you guys. It really, it looks pretty. In person, it looks really pretty. You can't really even tell the difference. Just remember, I'm under lights that is not normal. I'm under lights to show you extreme detail, and my camera is extremely zoomed. The naked eye doesn't see all this. So, like, let me show you guys, like, real life. Yara's going to zoom in with, like, almost, it's still a lot of lights right here. There's still a lot of lights, but not as <laughs> constant. Yeah, it's more real life lights if you were under some heavy lights. Hold on, Yara. There you go. So that's the polish. So you see how it more gl let let it focus. So what side is which? Okay, so this this side is super glue. So here we go. So this the left side th this side is the Can you see that? I don't know. Here, let's see that. I'm trying to show you guys. So this side the super glue side is a little bit more crystallized, this side. But it looks. So Karen Miller Anderson likes the epoxy. I do too. Here, in the light, you can kind of see the little crystallized, whereas the epoxy is more solid. That's what it is. Here, you guys. Let me give you guys Ani's review on glue. <laughs> um, so the, the super glue did polish with the jewel tool. So check. However, because of its the super glues, whatever it is, it did it didn't form a solid layer. So whenever I can get a solid layer, I'm gonna be able to polish it with the jewel tool because the wheels glide perfectly smooth. So since the super glue cre had more porous, there you go. The super glue was a little porous when it solidified. It, it didn't solidify. It didn't s uh, solidify. So solidify would have been solid. So it didn't cure, yeah. But the epoxy side was much more substantial and solid. So that's why, yeah, definitely more uniform. So I would say, I actually, Laverne, I actually have ice resin here. Um, oh, oh, what's her name? It's coming to me, the ice re resin lady. Um, cats. Oh, forgot her name. But I know it's Cats. Um, she, yeah, she's like the ice resin creator. Um, and so she actually gave me a whole bunch of ice resin. And I'm actually going to do what um, Nicole Ritchie did. I want to crush turquoise and then layer it with ice resin and then polish it. Because that was a pretty... Susan Kazmer. There you go, not cats. Susan Casimir. Hi, Susan. She's the most sweetest. And she has a jewel tool. She was so cute. I was on JTV with her once. And she was like, oh, my God. She was like, Ani's here. And I'm like, hi, Susan. And so she's lovely. And she has a jewel tool. And she wanted to even learn more on how to use the jewel tool. She does metalworking, too. Who knew? Not just ice resin. So nonetheless, you guys, um, I'm going to do a special segment on the resin over the turquoise because I thought Nicole Richie's bracelet was off the charts. That was the pretty. Yeah, so yes, yeah, so Nicole said the resin is a one shot deal. It's true, you only get one shot to play with resin. So that's why sometimes when the top doesn't quite ooh, come out as perfectly even as you want, we sand it and then follow the light ooh, beautifully. But 
She says when it comes to the gluing and the inlay, that's multiple layer um, job. So I honestly thought that I would have to go back in and fill in more turquoise and more glue. And I'm pleasantly surprised that we did it in one shot. So I didn't have any kind of um, holes or gaps. Damn, I impressed myself. So, so that leads me to the, back to our, <laughs> what we s initially started with, back to this, um, this one is the one that I wanted to fill with the turquoise. So this one, I guess, will use the uh, epoxy. So, Diana, good thing you bought that JB epoxy. So I'll list what I used uh, when the video is over. So it was JB, JB Weld. One minute epoxy is what I use. So, but basically, what the the moral of the story is, epoxy was much more of a solid, consistent um, glue. So it's much more uniform, easier to grind. Um, whereas the crazy glue, of course, was a little porous. But again, I still polished it. So you know what? If you have a certain something where you're really not going to notice those pores, see small little areas, and you have a jewel tool, and you have a jewel tool. Did I mention? And if you have a jewel tool, you can polish the crazy glue with the jewel tool. Show it again. Yara wants me to show it, show it again. So there you go. There you go. That so there, there, it's a good shot. So that is the turquoise. But you know what, you guys, that could have been my fault too if I didn't fill it properly. You know what, here, to remedy, if you're going to use crazy glue, to remedy those pores, you know, I could have filled it in with like copper grinding dust and that would have been a solution. Do you know what I mean? Oh, and then this is, let me flip this around because it seems like the light is better on this side. So this is the epoxy side. Hold on, where is that? I'm still not catching the light on that. But you can tell. Yeah. It's much more fluid. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see, I don't think the one minute and the five. So basically what it is that here, yesterday I learned what that one minute, that five minute, all that stuff that it means. Basically, you have one minute to put that mother on and get it going. Because by the time I finished talking and Yara mixed the epoxy, it was dry. You guys saw that. And I was like, mm. so that's why. Like Heidi said, by the time I put the um, copper on the epoxy side, it had already decided to, that window was closing. Your opportunity was now closed. So that's what it is. So if you need some time to load it, honestly, Deanna, you did good. That's Mingo. Hi, Mingo. Um, if, if you need time to load it, I would stick to the five-minute epoxy because I was being rushed on every angle, you guys. If I told you what I had to do after the show, you'd be like, Ani, are you nuts for doing this? Are you nuts? Yes, the answer is yes. Oh. Oh, so our lovely jewel tooler, Claire Horner from the UK, is in the book of ice resin. And it's called Create and Resonate. That's the name of the book. And that in that book, Claire Horner is featured of polishing an acorn with resin. And she polished it on what? <laughs> Come on, the jewel tool. Bravo. I know, Claire, you have been, the second you got that jewel tool, you were like nonstop. And I was like, God, she's got, she took the bull by the horns and just like rolled that jewel tool every direction. She did stones. She did metal smithing, and I had no idea you did the resin. I'm going to look for that book. So Claire Horner says she worked with the team of ice resin for two years. Wow, Claire, I didn't know that. I, I love hearing about you guys, like everything, from your past lives to now to everything. You know, I, I love it. And you guys give me even advice from your past careers and your knowledge. So I listen to everything, you guys. I just... I just love you guys. I really do. So um, this is fun. So I am going to now 
get my little petunia and sit right here and we're going to, oh, let me, wait, 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 I can't do that yet. I have to finish the rest of this ring because I didn't want to do it. Um, I didn't want to uh, finish the whole thing to show you guys how to finish polishing it because I didn't finish polishing it yesterday. So let's finish polishing this bad boy and then I will start filling it. So hang on. So what time are we at, Yarl? Yeah, all right, you guys, I can't continue too much longer. I have lots of work to do. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I do run a business. <laughs> this is not my job, but I'm here for you because I love you. I love you, I love you. Okay, so let's, get, let's finish this up so we can move on. So I, Yara, go ahead and give me an overhead. Okay, so overhead, you guys, this is what we did yesterday. Just to give you guys a little look-see-poo. I'm not going to go over how we cleaned the solder, how we didn't create a groove in it, because that like freaked everybody and their mother out. I just watched yesterday's show, and I show how to do that. So we did all that. Look how pretty. That came out really pretty. So yesterday's part one. And so this section I didn't finish. So this section I polished. You guys can see the side is really pretty polished. You guys see that? Yeah, what's happening? Why is the camera moving? So I polished this. You guys see that polished? So this side, not so much, okay? So I will polish this and polish one side of the bezel that I never got to. So let's get started. L let me go, uh, let me put my fingers on. Hold on. Maybe put the fingers on. Let's do this. I don't know how I got this one. But anyways, let's keep going. What does she want? Jolie's here. Hi, Jolie. Jolie's got a pink little sweater on today, like a little dress. She's like, Mom, I need to be on camera. You made me look pretty today. It was a little cold here in L.A., so I put a sweater on her. However, now it looks hot. So let's get started. I know these, these things take longer to put on than anything. So I'm going to go ahead and polish the side right here, and I'll show you guys how I do this. So I'm going to take my felt wheel. And remember, if you're polishing all the way in here, it's really important to have a felt wheel that is very sharp on the edges. So just like Myra said, if you can have more than one of these felts, it's really good because after a while, and when you do like rounded dome things and curved stuff, your felt starts to become like a little flying saucer. Mine not so much, but a lot of people's are. So this one is perfectly crisp and there goes everything. So I'm gonna run this at high speed and I'm going to give myself a good zhuzh of compound. You guys see that? And so now I will hold it like this and I'm gonna start here and then work my way around. So it's gonna be like kind of what you do, remember on like on a sanding stick, everything is flat, but I get to watch the progression. So you guys see how I quickly get to polish that? So just right to see how I polish that. You guys see how I just did that top portion and then I'll keep going. Show side view, yeah, perfect. Yeah, show side view of how I get all the way in there. Are you on the side view yet? Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to get all the way in there. Okay, see that? Oh my God. And you don't have to be a professional lapper to do this. Guess what? When I'm done, all I have to do is just drop it. And I have that ridiculous. Oh, Yara likes the top view. So do you guys see how it's perfectly fluid and I got all the way into that little nook and cranny without touching the back. Oh, shoot. I knew I was going to do that. Without touching, what side was I working on? Let's see. Oh, this side ha has the compound, so it was this side. So I just want you guys to see how I can gauge it without touching or marring the uh, back plate of the bezel. Do you guys see that? How perfectly precision and accurate you can be with the jewel tool. So I, very precise and accurate. So there, uh, so I have to do one side of the, um, the bezel. So I didn't do this side. So just remember not to polish the shank when you're doing this. So let's keep going. Hold on. These are so the ring is so shiny. It's so slippery, you guys. So this is all I'm doing. And now 
Now, here you guys can do two things. So let me give you options. Everyone loves options. Oh, how pretty this is. I just glanced over it. Um, let's give you guys options. So just take off any kind of excess compound. It's not going to be that much. You know, Joltool runs pretty clean. Um, but you can take two routes here. You can either use your magic buff, okay, or you can use the buff with the compound. So you can do two different uh, ways of doing it. So let's say that I wanted to use the magic buff. So this is the one that you would use that says, I have one package here that says, do not use compound. So this one already has compound impregnated in it. And I'll just show you what the side looks. So let's say you don't want to get any compound anywhere. This is a great way to polish without getting compound. So if you just want to give it a little polish, look at how pretty that polish comes up with no compound marks on it or anything. And if anything did lift up, I see a little bit from the bottom. I guess I didn't clean the bottom. Oh, lovely, Ani, good job. Just go like this. Hold on, let me make sure it doesn't touch the thing. Just lightly wipe it, and you get that really pretty high polish. Do you see that? Now, let's say that I don't want to use the magic buff, or I don't have the magic buff. Well, no problem. You can use your handy-dandy regular buff. Now, if your buff has been really worn down or if it looks good I don't have a a buff that has that sheen look to it but some people who use this for everything really have their buffs that are here this is one that I've done on purpose because I use this to polish polymer clay do you see how flat and saturated it is it's kind of like the compound is kind of melted into the fibers but if yours looks like that, you guys clean it because you want that extra fluff, you guys. So take sandpaper and give it an extra clean. And if it's really, really, really here, and if it's really, really, really saturated and you need to break up the fibers, um, you can use, I used to use a hand file, you guys, but you have to be really careful with this. You have to hold it really good and kind of, hold it at an angle and kind of break up the fibers like this and that's all you do you see how it kind of broke it's breaking up I'm not, I didn't turn the vacuum on on purpose so you guys can see things flying but that's it but try to avoid using this jewel toolers yeah show the side view you guys if you're a jewel tooler yeah you got to hold it really good hold it with two hands steady and just kind of tilt it in yeah I'm not gonna say that so so usually, you guys, these th this technique is kind of geared for people who don't have a jewel tool and rely on Tripoli and all sorts of things to polish. But a jewel tool buff is usually going to be real fluffy because, b to be honest with you, look at this. Take a look at my buff. Do you guys see how it kind of tore it up? I don't like that look. Uh, honestly, I find the sandpaper to be much more. Now I got all this thread all over me because I, I didn't turn the vacuum on on purpose. So if you're going to use the sandpaper, it's much more smoother and it keeps the fibers all aligned evenly. Do you guys see that? It's, yeah, side view, beautiful. So, you know, you can kind of feed it in there a little with your finger, but it's way safer. And if you have a jewel tool, I would recommend just using sandpaper. All right, here. Now look at the buff without, look. So the buff is much more softer, you guys see. But all of these fibers that kind of came up were from the, f the file. You guys see that? So mm, I'm not a fan of the file, you guys. That's, when you, that's what I used to do when I didn't have a jewel tool. Just a little jewel tool kind of a tip there. So what was I doing? Oh, I was showing how to polish. So we'll polish. What side was it? Darn it. I don't even know it's so polished. Uh, maybe it was this side. So look, just give yourself an extra high polish. Do you guys see that? Hold on. You see? Just to kind of take the rub marks off of the, um, what's it called? Hold it good, you guys. Uh, just to take the rub marks off from the, the what's it called? The felt. Sorry, I'm trying to think of what I'm going to do next. And just kind of go over it real quick softly. So the buff is not your sander, grinder, 
you know, or anything of that. The buff is designed to give that beautiful, high polish finish. You guys see that? Beautiful. Oh, hello. So there you go. Oh, yeah, I know, right? Nagoshi is so cute. He says, you turned it into chrome. I really did, you guys. It's like not a joke. Oh, Negotiator says he's saving up for his dual tool. Well, whenever you're ready, Negotiator, we can't wait for you to have one. And so there you go. So that's all of that. Again, if you want to see how I did the rest of this, please watch yesterday's video. So look. There. Perfect. Woo! Woo! Okay. So let's go ahead and start. So should I fill it tomorrow, Yara? But if I fill it tomorrow, I have to wait for it to dry. I don't know. Let's just fill it and then grind the mother down tomorrow. Whatever. I'll just do my work longer later. You want to just fill it? What should I do, you guys? So fill it. You guys have time? If not, I can fill it tomorrow. I'm getting yelled at. I need. I need to. F I need to work. No one's yelling. I'm being just nudged. I don't want. Okay, listen, you guys. I don't want to do things off camera. Ah, this is why we're live, right? We gotta do it. I hate those videos that go, and now they do a slip a sp a split screen and go, and now this is the finished piece. Well, what the hell? I'm not watching this for my entertainment. I need to learn how you did it and to see the trial and errors of what's happening. So I will not f film this off camera. I won't. So <coughs> I don't know. So if I do this tomorrow. What am I at? They need to know. Yeah, it's going to take me at least 30 minutes to fill it because I still have to grind it with the diamond bit to score the inside so the glue sticks really good. Okay, so Kristen actually said this is what I'll do, you guys, because I really want to do this live, and I really don't have time. Okay, there you go. So, okay, that's a good idea. So, you guys, I will do this tomorrow, the first thing the show starts. I will go ahead. So, we've already accomplished something. So, today was not for naught. Yes. So again, what Susan also did a confirmation. You know me; I always love confirmations. So she actually said what Kristen said. So I am going to grind this inside and fill it first thing when the show starts tomorrow. And then tomorrow is the giveaway Friday. So we'll be giving away something really good tomorrow. Um, and Heidi agrees. Heidi agrees. Thank you guys. I love you. Thank you so much. So I'll do this tomorrow. So let it fully cure over the weekend and I will grind this mother down on Monday but I'll do some extra stuff tomorrow so it'll be another fun show I'll figure out something else to do but I want you guys to really be involved that's the main thing too live who am I kidding I love hearing your feedback and say no honey do this no honey do that and I'm like okay let's try it so uh, yes and so even tomorrow you guys Oh, Martina says she'll always wait for me. So part three is fine. So you guys, I just want you guys to know too. So I went ahead and hammered some um, pieces nice and flat. So I'm going to cut these on air. But as I hammered them, you see how dull they got because I wanted them really flat? I wanted chips. Well, that's dull right here. It's dull. Hello. That's shiny. Hello. Let's do shiny dull. You guys see that? Shiny dull. So before I start slicing these to put in here, I'm going to show you how to polish the wire on the jewel tool and then I'm going to cut away. So I think tomorrow would be best because I can explain to you guys every step of the way instead of being rushed. So <laughs> okay, so yeah, all is not lost. Don't you guys forget we did this. I should have polished the rest of this, but it's okay. You guys know how to polish the rest of that or I can do it even tomorrow. But other than that, you guys, I feel like today was a surprise and a success. I did not expect this to go this way. This is not bad. Could you imagine making this for Father's Day? You know, I, okay, it is a men's ring. Hello. But just imagine, like, you know, it, let's say it has, su it has such character. You know, if you... S oh, Yarrow says remove my finger. Why are they ugly, Yarrow? Yes, they are. So, like, 
but look at what I did, you guys. I didn't even have to make the bezel. It was some casting. Okay, so look, hold on, hold on. Let's get something straight. Suni just asked what gauge is, oh, what wire? This wire? I gotta get, I gotta put a battery in my millimeter gauge. However, I had one, you know what, when I was sitting on this bench, I didn't have that fancy um, battery operated one. We had the one that, you know, that little brass looking one that you slid up and checked. I don't know where that one went, but I don't know how many gauge and how many millimeter it is. Don't know, tomorrow I'll tell you. Um, but for the most part, you guys, this was just a casting that, I don't know, some jeweler had given me, you know, to show how to finish, because this used to be a casting, and I showed how to polish it on the jewel tool. Junk from some show. It wasn't junk from some show. It was actually given to me, so at one point it did have a sprue. You can tell it's a casting. It has some nasty porosity. So I it's just really nasty. But I just use it to show how to highlight, you know, if you want to highlight the um, raised areas, how to polish the inside. Actually, I never polished the inside of these. You can see that's still raw casting. Maybe tomorrow I'll show you guys how to do that along with the glue fillage mm -hmm. and some more. And then polishing these little wires the proper way in the safe way. You know, <sighs> you know me. I'm always about safety, really, you guys. I really am. Okay, I know everyone's like, oh, tie your hair back. Okay, listen, you guys. I, I'm not close to the machine. It doesn't suck things in like other polishing machines do, so I'm pretty safe. Like, uh, like I don't know about you, but it's noth nothing sucking. Even if I lose control, you guys saw yesterday what happened. The ring, what did it do? It didn't fly at me. The ring went and it went to the bottom. Safety first. So, again, let me please reiterate while looking at you guys' face. If you are... Through the camera, I'm looking at your face. When you guys need to, if you are a non-jewel tooler, I'm speaking to everyone who watches me on YouTube, who has a regular polisher and is using freaking Tripoli and a million different uh, compounds, I want to say abrasives because they are abrasives, to polish. And your, fel your buffs are loaded to the point where they're like, to have a gleam of shine on it. When you guys use the file, I'm going to use that file. Shiznit. Oh, here it is. I don't recommend using a rake. <sighs> I just want you to know, not ever have I ever seen any jeweler that have had like 60 years experience, my dad's friends, factories or anything, ever use a rake. It's, it's unnecessary and quite frankly, it's dangerous because if that rake gets pulled out of your hand, you're the target where that rake is coming back and gonna hit. So please just know that this is a technique we used to use as jewelers. Just grab a little hand file, it could be the one with the little wooden handle, whatever. But I just want you to make sure you're holding it tight, two hands, we're talking tight, okay? Use your index finger. You see this little index finger God gave you? Use it as support, okay? And when you approach the wheel, okay? Because first of all, y on a jewel tool, again, you're not going to have this need, okay? But when you approach it, you use your index finger as support so it's not wobbly. You use it and you just hold it a little bit, kind of up and down, and to break up the fibers. That's all. The fibers of the cloth, that's it. But if you are a jewel tooler, remember all you need is a little bit of sandpaper just to wake that little edge up. There you go, that's it. So just, I really want to reiterate that because I don't, I, it's very, right I want everyone to have the right info. Believe me, you guys, I have worked, I was a little girl and they would cho show me this technique. Like freaking 12 years old, here, Ani, go clean the buffs. Okay, but they're very clear. You hold it like this, support it, and do it. And you're like, okay, I'm doing it. But it is, if you're going to rake, this is the safest way to rake. Again, if you have a regular polishing machine. Okay, I'm sick of raking with my own. I don't like to ruin my own. So here, let's take something new. This is Jewel Tool in the classic position. Okay, so it's on, right? Okay, let it get on a little bit more. There you go. Okay, so if you're going to do it, you guys, you hold it like this, and you go like this. You guys see how it's going to break? I didn't put the vacuum on, but you know what I mean. You see how it started to break up right here? 
and you just kind of work it across. So if you have a new buff and you are a jewel tooler, look at me. Look at me. Jewel toolers only. Jewel toolers only. People who own a jewel tool. All you need is some sandpaper to start and fluff your buff when you first get it. So all you do is this, you guys. Ready? Ready? Just go like this. Just bend it a little and go like this. You just need to fluff that little edge. No raking necessary because what you want is to get this extra layer of fluff available. That's it. And so when you use this again, like I have here, all you're doing is just getting that fluff up again. You don't need to freaking rake the poor buff. It did nothing to you except give you a high polish. Okay, so there. I'm done. Uh, I'm done. I need to go back to basics. It's really important, you guys. I, I don't want anyone to get hurt out there. It's the, <laughs> the, bu the buffers out there, you guys, are some scary-ish, let me tell you. I know. Um, oh, I can keep going on and on, you guys. You have no idea the things I know. Uh, what's in this little head? Of <laughs> so, you guys, I will see you guys here tomorrow. I love you lots. Oh, my God. Felt everywhere. I mean, buff uh, cotton. Thank God it's non toxic. Um, oh, so you guys, I just want you to know my birthday sale is over. Mm, wah, wah, wah. But it's okay. We have our Father's Day sale that launched yesterday, Yarrow? Uh, this oh, this morning. So that also has a whole other sale of items. And uh, since you guys love that free shipping, are we we're offering it again, right? Yes. yes. So I, I actually gave the green light. I just want to make sure they listen to me around here. So the free shipping on over 149, 59, what is it? 149. Oh, 149 is alive and well. I know you guys really always ask me about the free shipping, so I really wanted to include that in the sale. So we've got some great items. So if you know someone that has a jewel tool and you want to get some supplies for, or what I've been noticing, I love, oh, so cute for Linda's birthday. She goes, I already got two jewel tool certificates, like little gift certificates. Know that we also sell gift certificates. So super easy. You can buy it over online. We email you the code and you can and you can just give it to them as a gift, right, Yaro? How's that work? It's a gift card code. So you don't have to wait for it to arrive. Last minute gift, you guys. That's my kind of last minute gift. You know, even if you buy it on the weekend, like let's say you buy it on Saturday or even Sunday, we get notified and we can generate that code for you immediately. Oh, so as soon as you place the order, the code gets generated and you get it immediately. Really? And forward that code to the person. Okay, so that's why Linda got so excited. So anyways, you guys, see you guys here tomorrow and check out my Father's Day specials because the Father's important. If I didn't have a jewel tool, if I didn't have a jewel tool, if I didn't have a, a father that was a master jeweler, I would not be standing here in front of you guys. Yep. This is where it all happened. These two benches right here. Right here. So, uh, yeah, and you guys... Take a look at what a bench looks like. I just want you to know there's burn marks here. This activity happening. So don't kill yourselves if your benches are not as pristine as things that you see on camera or people that show. The hardcore jewelers have benches that look like this. Granted, they're a little bit more tidier, but for the most part, you're going to get the burn marks. You're going to get all of the saw blade marks and everything but that shows that you're working so so don't kill yourselves over how perfect to perfect perfect make sure your pieces are perfect 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 then you can clean up if you have time anyways you guys i see you here tomorrow love you long time love you love you love you bye you guys